So at this point, we've really reached the moment of truth. It's time to apply the glue to the bottom of the gauge. So now I'm going to peel it up. As you can see, again, I'm going to use a shallow angle and go from one corner to the other and pull it back such that I've got about an eighth of an inch of tape showing above the gauge. I'm going to just set that there like that. The next thing I'm going to do is use the Catalyst C and I'm going to apply sparingly a very even layer of Catalyst to the bottom of the gauge and then let it dry and that takes about 60 seconds and it may take a little longer if it's cold. I'm going to take the Teflon tape and get it ready and I'm going to take the Embon 200 adhesive which is cyanoacrylate glue uh, essentially it's super glue. And I'm going to put a bead right at the seam of the tape where it's pulled back. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to lift up the tape and in one swiping motion I want to push down with the tape. Now that we've swiped down the gauge and the glue you want to hold pressure on the gauge and sort of roll your thumb so that you're reaching all four corners of the gauge. And you want to apply pressure for at least 60 seconds. And if your shaft is very cold, you may need to hold your thumb there longer as the heat from your thumb is actually helping to cure the glue. Okay, it's been about 60 seconds. And I'm going to just visually check this out. It looks pretty good. As you can see, the excess glue has been pushed out to the sides of the gauge. And that's fine. Like I said, we'll clean that up with the razor blade. This looks pretty good. So now, we're really to the point where we're going to attach our lead wires to the strain gauge. Uh, of course, first we need to remove this tape from the gauge. And now I'm going to apply a very steep angle so that I leave the gauge on the shaft. So I'm going to pull back sharply on the tape and just catch one corner at a time once again. And then pull straight back to remove the tape. All right, I have removed excess glue from around the gauge as much as I care to with the razor blade. And now I'm going to use the fiberglass scratch brush to remove the oxidation that's built up on the pads here of my strain gauge. You want to be careful not to, of course, scratch into the circuit of the strain gauge but you want fresh copper to accept the solder that we're going to put on these pads in a moment. Okay. We're going to take the solder and soldering iron and you want to completely cover each pad with solder. Okay, those are ready to accept lead wires. The next task in our final step of attaching the lead wires to the strain gauge is to prepare the four conductor ribbon cable. I've already cut it to the appropriate length and separated the four strands 
and pulled them back about an inch to an inch and a half. With the general purpose torque pattern strain gauge, you need to create a jumper wire with the green conductor. So I'm going to strip away approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end. Next, I'm going to come back on the insulation a half inch or so and bite into the insulation without cutting any of the strands and slide the insulation up like so. Then I'm going to crimp in the center where the wires are exposed. Crimp that down, twist my stranded wire at the end, and I've created my jumper wire. Next, I'm going to cut the remaining three conductors to the same length as the green conductor where it is crimped. And I'll strip the ends and tin them all. And it'll be ready to solder to the gauge. Now I'm ready to solder my lead wires to the strain gauge. I'm going to use the tweezers to attach the wires. They allow me to hold them in place without damaging the wire or burning my fingers. As you can see these wires are quite small and I'm working from the inside towards the outside and the reason for that is that sometimes it can be difficult to solder the inner lead wires once the outer lead wires have been attached. You want to make sure that each of your solder connections is good and that the solder completely covers each of the wires and that there are no bridges in between your solder pads. The last step prior to protecting the strain gauge is to apply the M-line rosin solvent which removes any corrosive flux from the solder connections. Just brush it on like so and it dries quickly in air. I should note that the pattern that I use to attach the conductors black, green, white, green, red is specific for a positive or negative output signal based on the direction of rotation. After the rosin solvent dries, next you apply the air dry polyurethane. Completely coat the entire gauge with the urethane as well as the lead wire and solder connections. This waterproofs the gauge and provides a very minimal amount of protection as well. Just brush it on, make sure you get in between all the conductors and allow that to air dry for several minutes. The strain gauge installation is essentially complete. There are a couple of different methods for protecting the strain gauge and I will cover those in separate instructional videos. Thanks for your time.